All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Landon with LMR.com. It's Dino Day. Probably wondering, hey, what the heck? Uh, Dino Day is usually out in the shop. Y'all usually have a car on the rollers. Uh, what's going on? Well, today, a little bit change of program for this Dino Day. We're doing an engine dyno instead of a chassis dyno. This is something we wanted to do for quite a long time, and it just so happens that all the stars lined up and we're finally able to do it. What we're going to be focusing on today primarily is the SVE 170cc cylinder heads and, of course, this 306 cubic inch engine. Ever since the SVE heads uh, came back, we wanted to get them on a engine that complements that particular cylinder head and give all of you some horsepower and some torque. Now I get it. When it comes to small block boards, there's a million ways to cut this cloth. You know, you can pick a different intake, you can do this, you can do that. So the specs and parts that we chose for this 306 cubic inch engine are very enthusiast minded and they're parts that are readily available on our website for you all to purchase. So jumping right into it, the engine dyno is going to be performed at Ted Eaton's shop. He owns Eaton Balancing. Ted is an old school guy. He's been around a while. He's been doing this a very long time. He has a pretty old school shop, bunch of uh, vintage things laying around. You know, I think we spent more time looking at all the stuff, but the backstory on Ted real quick, other than him doing internal combustion engines, what seems like forever, he has a very strong knowledge in the Ford Y block stuff. I guess you could kind of say that's his specialty. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into some of uh, Ted's articles and his findings on Y blocks and other internal combustion engines, as well as internal combustion engine science, we'll leave a link to uh, his website in the video description. All right, so turning our attention back over here to this 306. This is a refinished 302 short block that's been bored 30 over that's going to give us our 306 cubic inch displacement. It has a uh, refinished Ford crankshaft, refinished Ford rods, and the pistons are flat top aluminum pistons with four valve reliefs per piston. And then as we progress further in the video, we'll talk more about those valve reliefs later on. The camshaft of choice was an Anderson N41 cam. That camshaft's been around forever. It's tried and true and works great for this type of setup. Works good with stock heads, stock pistons, and it also works great for, I'm gonna call these entry level heads versus, you know, maybe mid range or higher range cylinder heads for the small block Fords. And the operating range for this camshaft is 2600 to 6200 RPM. Has a nice lopy idle. And again, it's just a all around solid cam, you know, for this type of engine build, uh, being enthusiast minded and kind of just street performance, uh, if you want to categorize it that way. Sitting on top of the engine uh, will be a pair of SVE 170cc cylinder heads. Quick refresher on the SVE 170cc heads, 170cc intake runner volume, 66cc exhaust runner volume. They have a 56cc combustion chamber, 202 intake valve, 160 exhaust valve, and then this is a single spring. We loaded the head with 3 8 stud mount, Scorpion 1.6 ratio roller rockers, and then uh, the push rod length, well, that was just determined on the stuff we have in this engine, and that's gonna vary from engine to engine. Sitting on top of the SVE 170cc heads will be a Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap intake manifold. This is a dual plane intake manifold, and it's got the little air gap here between the uh, runner and then the engine valley. This is a dual plane carburetor intake. The reason why we're going with carb is just, it's a heck of a lot easier to do engine dynos with carburetors versus EFI. And then the carburetor of choice is going to be one that Ted has at his shop, 750 CFM dyno carb. We're going that route because he knows that carburetor front and back. He can make some quick changes you know, we can be off and running pretty quick. All right, so back over to more of the uh, finite details uh, and dyno technical data for the engine. Back over to the valve reliefs. We did have to enlarge the intake and exhaust reliefs per cylinder uh, with a carbide bit and a lot of patience. If you include the other two valve reliefs for that piston, the dish volume was 3.7 cc. So that's gonna move us into our static compression ratio, also known as SCR. That's what most folks refer to when we're talking about engines. And that static compression ratio for this engine is 10.05 to one. Now, another ratio that's very important, and Ted actually kind of gave us a very cliff noted description of this, is the dynamic compression ratio, also known as DCR. The dynamic compression ratio is calculated with the same values as static compression ratio with the addition of the rod length and the intake valve closing events of the camshaft. Now, without getting too scientific, Ted explained to us that when engines are built on the borderline of being pump gas capable, then the dynamic compression ratio value becomes much more important than the static compression value. Dynamic compression for this engine is 7.74 to one. All right, so moving along here, we are gonna be using 93 pump gas uh, and the ethanol content was roughly 4%. Are the three runs that we're gonna show for this video, the conditions above the carburetor, temperature was roughly 97 degrees and relative humidity was 46%. All right, so now turning our attention to the accessory drive. Typically with engine dynos, you don't see any of this stuff. Uh, there's an electric water pump, a harmonic balancer, and that's it. 
Well, for us, we wanted it to be a little bit different. Uh, throw on a water pump and an alternator. Because of the reverse rotation water pump, we had to have an extra accessory drive component just so we could get the belt routed in the correct manner. So that's why we went uh, with the alternator as well. So as we progressed with the three final runs that we're gonna show here on video, Ted did check over the timing. Uh, he confirmed all that stuff. All three of these runs, uh, we're looking at about 36 degrees of total time. And he did make a few tweaks to the carburetor. And kind of once we got through a, a few runs, we, we felt good about it. We were ready to do some pulls. Long tube dyno headers were also used with some simple down pipes to divert the exhaust outside. All right, so real quick, you'll notice a little bit of smoke uh, in the high RPM for runs one one and two, we had a uh, loose intake bolt. Uh, let a little coolant get into the oil, got all that fixed, all that cleaned up, uh, and that's just a little bit of residual burn off. All right, run one, let's take a look at it. Man, it uh, sounds really good, this engine's, this engine's peppy. Run one, max power, 355.5 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, and then our max torque was 362.5 pound-feet at 4,800 RPM. Real nice, pretty curve. We did pull it to 5,500 for this first hit that we're showing on video. Here for run two, Ted's gonna stretch us out just a little bit further in the RPM range. All right, so run two, a little bump in power. We got 368.3 horsepower at 5,700 RPM, and then 371.1 pound-feet of torque at 4,900 RPM. Again, real nice, pretty curve. You definitely start to see some, some fall off after that 5,800 RPM mark. We're making some power, and uh, I think we can all agree that the old saying of third time's the charm, well, we're gonna turn it over for a third time. All right, so run three. This was our uh, best run for the 306 cubic inch engine. Ended up making 371.7 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, and then 372.8 pound-feet of torque at 4,900 RPM. And again, real nice, pretty curve. This is great for a street-driven engine and definitely met our expectations. And what was kind of cool was uh, when we were talking to Ted throughout all this, uh, you know, he's done it for so long. He said we could probably expect 1.1 to 1.2 horsepower per cubic inch with this particular setup. Well, if we take 371.7 and we divide that into 306 cubic inch, guess what? We get 1.21 horsepower per cube. If that doesn't tell you that Ted knows what he's doing, I don't know what does. And again, that's exactly the ballpark we were we were aiming for and what kind of what we were anticipating. But going back to those accessory drive components, through Ted's knowledge of him doing this over all the years, give or take, alternator pulls about six horsepower, the water pump pulls about six horsepower. So there's 12 horsepower on the table. Uh, you can kind of come back uh, and play with those numbers just a little bit. Uh, but you know, 371 plus 12, that's 383 horsepower. If we wanted to get, you know, kind of the, well, my engine made this type of mindset, but regardless of any of that, we've got a really, really nice engine here. It's great to see the SVE 170cc heads in action on this 306 cubic inch bullet that we put together here in the shop. All with parts that are readily available on LMR.com. All right, everybody, so that's a wrap on this dyno day. Uh, this was a fun one. This was our first engine dyno, at least at the time of this video, and uh, Scott Hubbard put together a heck of a 306. As you saw, we're making about 1.21 horsepower per cubic inch, which exactly was our uh, expectations, and we'll have a really, really nice engine to going one of the cars up here in the near future. As always, lots to talk about with engines, lots to talk about dynos. Leave us a comment below what you think of this 306 cubic inch small block Ford with the SVE 170cc heads. We're gonna sign off as always, folks. If you find value in what we're doing, uh, please consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. And then uh, till we see you in the next one, uh, for all things small block Ford, keep right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.